family-sized Kia e-Niro is the most complete affordable electric vehicle we've seen to date. Key to its appeal is the kind of driving range you'd expect from a much larger full electric car, WLTP rated at 282 miles. Plus it's practical, well equipped and easy to adapt to. There are certainly cheaper EV options in this sector, but we're not sure that there are any better ones. If you need a sensible family car and you've decided that some form of electrification needs to be included in your next one, then the Kia Nero ought to be on your radar. You can have it as a conventional hybrid or a PHEV plug-in hybrid, but it's the full electric e-Nero model we're going to test here. You might quite understandably view the thought of switching from conventional combustion engine motoring to full electric ownership as being rather a big step to take. Barstool experts may have you put off EV ownership by telling you that the only full battery-powered models with a decent driving range are the large luxury segment ones you probably won't be able to afford. Well, that's not quite true. In more recent times, the Hyundai Kia Korean conglomerate has been pushing boundaries when it comes to the kind of battery technology customers can expect from more affordable cars. And the result in 2018 was the launch of two models, the Hyundai Kona Electric and its close cousin, this Kia e-Niro. The e-Niro also shares its battery drivetrain with the second generation version of the model that kicked off Kia's efforts in the EV segment back in 2014, the Soul EV. The first generation Soul EV rather floundered here due to a combination of its relatively high cost and restricted driving range, meaning that only around 500 units were sold in our market in its four years of production. In contrast, this e-Nero model almost doubled that showing in its first month on sale. Should you still need convincing about the improvement in battery-powered automotive technology and the changing public perception of EVs, you've got it right there. A big reason behind this sales success lies with the driving range issue mentioned earlier. Most affordable electric vehicles use a battery pack of around 40 kilowatt hours in size. In an e-Nero, though, there's the kind of larger 64 kilowatt hour battery you'd get in a much larger luxury EV, which means, obviously, a much longer driving range, WLTP rated at 282 miles. In the EV market's most affordable segment, only the electrically identical Hyundai Kona Electric and Kia Soul EV models can match this kind of showing. And both, though arguably trendier than this Kia, offer significantly less interior space for people and packages. All of which means that if you've been waiting for battery-powered family cars to get serious, this one should interest you more than any affordable EV on sale to date. Sounds promising. Time to put this car to the test. Kia's intent in producing what is arguably the most viable, affordable, full electric family car yet made is clearly to conquest buyers who'd never previously have considered an EV. So what will these people notice when getting to grips with this one? At the wheel, it certainly feels pretty conventional, apart from the rotary controller that takes the place of a gear stick for the single-speed auto gearbox that all EVs have to have. Press the starter button, and there's lots of rather unnecessary musical input, six loud chimes and a little background jingle as the system check runs through a software setup before advising that you're ready to start driving. All of this rather distracts your attention from the lack of engine rumble up ahead, but your attention will certainly be caught by what happens when you merely brush the accelerator to initiate forward motion. 
The way this car spears away from rest is pretty surprising the first time you experience it, though the effect is slightly less startling than is the case with some rival EVs. That's because Kia is engineered in a split second of delay between throttle application and power delivery to make the whole experience feel slightly more combustion-like and linear, but only slightly. Still, once you understand the drive dynamics in play here, the rush of blood to the head that this e-Nero gets every time you press the loud pedal with any real vigour is perhaps only to be expected. The single AC synchronous electric motor used here generates 150 kilowatts, the equivalent of 201 brake horsepower. And you get a lot more pulling power than would be generated by an equivalent combustion engine, 395 newton meters of torque, every bit of which is delivered to you right from the get-go rather than building as it would with a fossil fuel power plant. All of this is just as well because this car, like all EVs, is considerably weightier than an equivalent combustion engine model, tipping the scales at 1,812 kilos, which makes it around half a ton heavier than a comparably sized Ford Focus, for example. Most of this is down to the fact that this full electric Nero must carry around a much heavier battery pack than its petrol electric stablemates. The battery pack in a self-charging Nero hybrid weighs 33 kilos, and the one in a PHEV Nero plug-in weighs 160. 17 kilos. Contrast that with an e-Nero where the lithium-ion polymer battery system weighs 457 kilos, about the same total weight as a Caterham 7 sports car. That's an awful lot of bulk to carry around, which makes it even more impressive that an e-Nero can sprint from rest to 60 miles an hour in just seven and a half seconds. Like all electric cars, it runs out of puff pretty soon after that, mind you, at which point you realise that driving the car in this way is somewhat ridiculous, not least because the energy you've just pointlessly used is probably going to take an extra half hour's worth of charging replenishment of a battery as large as the one being used here. Where most EVs in this segment use battery systems generating about 40 kilowatt hours, an e-Nero fronts up with a 64 kilowatt hour setup that's more than 50% gutsier. And that of course means the potential for a much longer driving range between charges, WLTP rated at 282 miles. For many likely customers, this could be enough to make this all electric here an everyday usable proposition in a way that many other affordable EVs just can't be. You're going to need to adjust to a slightly different driving style, mind you, to maximise the distance you can travel between charges, which primarily means management of the energy regenerative process that kicks in when you come off the throttle. Like most other electric vehicles, this one provides you with paddle shifters for this purpose behind the steering wheel. The left paddle intensifies the the regenerative braking feel while the right paddle reduces it either way through three distinct selectable stages. Select the maximum regen effect you can get via stage three and you'll hardly ever have to use the brake pedal at all and in fact you can actually bring the car to a complete stop just by continually pulling on the left hand steering wheel paddle. You'll initially play with all of this a bit, but then probably tire of it and activate the system's auto function, which makes all the decisions for you when it comes to optimizing the black art of brake energy harvesting. Pulling the right-hand paddle for a second or more will get that auto feature to kick in, at which point the car factors in what Kia calls predictive energy control, using its safety system radar sensor to constantly calculate the optimum level of braking regeneration based on the positioning of vehicles ahead. As you'd expect, a greater level of harvesting is possible in the kind of urban conditions that will see you using the brakes rather more. For town driving, a virtual engine sound system cuts in below 15 miles an hour, creating an artificial noise that warns those on the pavement of this e-Nero's near-silent approach in urban areas. Actually, the sound in question isn't very loud and would probably be drowned out on busier city streets, but at least it shows that all Automotive engineers are thinking of the possible dangers that battery-powered vehicles pose to deaf or visually impaired pedestrians. 
Get beyond the city limits onto twisting secondary roads and you'll be in territory where an electric vehicle would usually be far less in its comfort zone. On a recent test we found that this car's close cousin, the identically engineered Hyundai Kona Electric, struggled a little to channel its prodigious reserves of torque to the tarmac. The e-Nero manages that a little better, partly because of the slightly more linear power delivery we mentioned earlier and partly because Kia's chosen to use grippier Michelin tyres than the Kona's budget brand Nexen rubber. It's still pretty easy to induce front-end wheel spin though as you'll quickly find with generous throttle applications on damp roads out of tight corners. Drive with more care though and this shouldn't be much of an issue. Smooth pedal input will prolong the life of your front tyres too. Driving with care though won't help you much if you saddle yourself with a family car featuring the ride quality of a horse-drawn cart. That might be a worry for some coming to this car after experiencing much older generation electric vehicles. Because of the weight issue we mentioned earlier, EVs have in the past often needed very firm suspension to stop them from wallowing about through the bends, so they often tend to ride poorly over broken surfaces as a result. Thanks to a supple and quite sophisticated independent rear suspension setup, this one's a bit better than the class norm in this respect, though you still feel deeper potholes and sharper speed humps more keenly than we'd like. Cornering composure is also better than you might expect from a full electric car, primarily thanks to the way that bulky battery pack has been spread evenly across the floor pan, so lowering the centre of gravity. You might even be tempted to press on a bit through the twisty stuff, were it not for the fact that the electric steering rack manages to be relatively feel-free. On the highway, the relative quietness of the drive line means that you particularly notice tyre and wind noise, and even things like the wiper motor and the ventilation fan. The acceleration on offer starts to thin out very noticeably once you get beyond 65 miles an hour, a characteristic that could do with being set a touch higher to fit in with a more usual national limit. Of course, you won't often be approaching the top speed capability, or at least you won't if you want to preserve anything like a reasonable driving range figure anyway, but for the record, it's 104 miles an hour. Another way of quickly depleting your travelling distance between charges is to select the most urgent of the three driving modes on offer, Sport, which gives you noticeably quicker throttle response and bathes the instrument cluster's power and charge gauge in an orange glow. You'll try it once, but then probably stay in the two other settings, Eco and Normal, for most of the time after that. Perhaps also with one eye on the energy flow graphic you can select to appear to the left of the speedo to show you at any given time what's being powered or charged by what. As in any EV, there are lots of screen options to allow you to plan your route around your remaining available charge, or to engage in partly justified smugness at the extent of your eco-friendliness in comparison to combustion engine to travel. This one, though, delivers more where it matters. If you buy it, you might not ever exactly replicate that 282-mile driving range figure we quoted earlier, but there's the potential to regularly get reasonably close to it between charges which is what matters most. And what makes this an EV that many families really could consider as an only car? For them, the future starts right here. One senior auto industry stylist recently described the current trend for EV model design as chaos. It's certainly true that no defined theme has yet emerged, especially amongst more affordable models. Competing brands remain divided over whether an electric vehicle should look futuristic and trend-setting, like, say, a BMW i3, or familiar and accessible, like, say, a Renault Zoe. Because Kia already has a full electric model that looks quite avant-garde, the Soul EV, the brand's decision to stick with a more conventional look for this e-Nero is perhaps understandable. So let's more closely inspect what we have here. In Kia range terms, the Nero's 4.37 metre length positions it somewhere between a focus sized seed family hatch and a Qashqai style mid sized sportage SUV. 
the car is nominally an SUV. In this case, Kia prefers the term crossover, hence the chunky stance, the integrated roof rails and muscular wheel arches that house large 17-inch diamond-cut two-tone aluminium rims. A slim mid-level character line, short overhangs and tapered rear windows all aim to soften the boxy dimensions. It's at the front, though, that you'll most easily be able to identify this battery-powered model as the full electric member of the Nero family. The usual grille slats are replaced by a rather inelegant blanked-off plastic panel that's supposed to be more aerodynamic and features an integrated charging point. Redesigned air intakes, special arrowhead-shaped lower LED daytime running lights and light blue trim highlights help it stand out further. In the quest for efficiency, aerodynamics have been prioritised, hence these air curtains in each front corner to channel air away from the front wheel arches and reduce turbulence. That emphasis continues at the back with the shaping of this roof spoiler and the design of this lower diffuser that aids airflow beneath the car. Even the location of the rear view camera attachment has been carefully considered housed within the rear wiper mounting. It all contributes to a 0.29 CD drag factor that's notably sleek for a crossover class car. Flanking the contour tailgate glass are LED tail lamps and blue highlights below the rear reflectors on the restyled bumpers complement the front end theme. Of course, of much greater importance is the stuff you can't see. Conventional looking EVs are often compromised in their basic design by the need in other forms to accommodate a bulky combustion engine. But all Nero variants feature electrification to some extent and the priority with this one was to incorporate its bulky battery pack in a way that had as little impact as possible on cabin space. Have the designers managed that? Time to take a look inside. We'll start here at the front. Yes, this is a glorified family hatchback, but you'd easily be convinced of this car's pretensions towards spaciousness if you happen to enter it after trying most other common compact EVs, say BMW's i3, or this Kia's close cousin, the Hyundai Kona Electric. There's significantly more cabin width than you'd get in either of those cars, 1,423 millimetres of shoulder room to be exact, and more legroom too, up to 1,059 millimetres of it here at the front. Perhaps more significantly, it's big enough in here to allow a potential buyer to switch out of a conventional mid-sized SUV, say a Sportage or a Qashqai, into one of these without a feeling of having switched down in size. We're struggling to think of any other affordable electric vehicle of which that is true. In terms of cabin features unique to the Nero in its full electric form, well, the main change lies with the change from a conventional gear shift lever to this central circular controller for the single speed transmission. This shift by wire dial, key is first, provides the focal point for a panel extending out from the base of the mid-mounted armrest that also incorporates buttons for the parking brake and the drive mode selector, as well as for the heated seats, the heated steering wheel, the parking sensors and the braking auto hold switch. Other unique e-Nero features are more difficult to spot. You might pick up the extra blue dashboard trimming highlights, but you'd be unlikely to notice that the front seats are different, redesigned to save space and weight, but just as supportive as the conventional chairs they replace, thanks to specially dense foam-backed covers. More subtle differences can be found incorporated into this 8-inch center dash infotainment touchscreen. This allows you to locate nearby charging points and set departure times to preheat and pre-cool the cabin. Or, if you want to feel particularly smug, it's possible to call up a display allowing you to gauge the trip or vehicle lifetime CO2 saving gained from driving your e-Nero compared to a petrol car of similar size. Physical shortcut buttons around this monitor's frame are helpful, but the graphical resolution isn't up to BMW or Volkswagen standards, and some of the touchscreen icons are a little on the small side, which can make hitting them on the move a little awkward. 
This display also has all the usual connectivity and entertainment features too, of course. So there's navigation, voice control, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring, Bluetooth and an 8-speaker 320-watt JBL premium sound system with a DAB tuner. Plus, you get the full suite of Kia connected services created in association with TomTom. Activate the connectable Wi-Fi system to your phone and via these you can find four-day weather forecasts, be advised of speed camera locations, get live traffic information that can reroute you around jams and use a local search function that can direct your eNero to anything from a supermarket to a service station. Anything this centre screen can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the instrument cluster display you view through the leather-stitched three-spoke steering wheel. Kia apparently has plans to further update this, but here in this original car you get this rather curious mixture of circular LED dials and a central 7-inch LCD screen. In the dial areas, the gauge on the left combines a state-of-charge battery gauge with a blue and white power or charge meter and a digital range readout. The right-hand gauge includes a digital speedo. On the colour screen in between, there are all kinds of useful displays. The usual ones for audio selection, a compass and safety system and a few bespoke screens specifically for this EV, including one that gauges your driving style, showing the proportion of any given journey given over to either economical or dynamic driving. As for practical touches, well, you'd hope that doing without a conventional gear stick might free up a little extra storage space at the base of the centre console, which to some extent has happened here. There's a big open stowage area at the base of the centre stack and you also gain a useful storage area between the seats with a lidded top, this sliding back to reveal two large cup holders with neat pop-out holding panels. On an e-Nero, it's also easier to get to this compartment at the bottom of the centre stack, which includes a standard wireless phone charging mat above a 12-volt port and a couple of USB points. It's a pity all this can't be covered neatly away from prying eyes, though. You'll find another USB point in this deep storage box between the seats, while other storage areas include these rather small door pockets, a reasonably sized glove box and overhead space for your sunglasses. Ticket clips feature in the sun visors. Are there issues? Well, not many. Kia hopes that this e-Nero model's high specification level will distract potential buyers' attention from the fact that this is essentially the kind of cabin you'd expect from a car costing just over £20,000, not one priced at just over £30,000. Don't get us wrong, it's pleasantly designed and in some ways quite plush, with black leather upholstery featuring white stitching and white piping, plus a heated steering wheel and heated front seats. All of this is certainly nice to have, but it's soon clear that the cabin's been constructed to a tight budget. Closer inspection of some areas of the leather trim reveals that elements of it are of the faux leather variety and apparently smartly finished fitments you'll use frequently, the steering regeneration paddles and the door handles, for instance, feel rather plasticky to the touch. European brands realise how important it is not to skimp in these areas and Kia needs to learn this too. On the plus side, though, getting comfortable is really easy. Powered lumbar support features on the driver's seat and there's reach as well as rake adjustment for the steering wheel, something you don't get with a rival Nissan Leaf. And there are some very thoughtful design touches. Take the way the wireless charging mat lets you know with a beep and a green light when your handset is fully charged. And you'll be warned if you're about to leave the car with the phone still on the pad. Another really nice feature is the lamp integrated into the top of the dashboard, which incorporates a light that displays when your e-Nero is plugged in and shows you whether the battery pack is recharging or fully charged. That'll enable you to quickly see this Kia's charge status at a glance from outside the car. Right, time to take a look in the rear. Now, we mentioned earlier that this e-Nero offers a cabin that feels a touch larger than most similarly priced EV rivals. That's because its 2,700mm wheelbase, the cabin length between its front and rear wheels, is longer. To give you some class perspective, that figure is 100mm longer than a Hyundai Kona Electric and 130mm lengthier than a BMW i3. An advantage you'd expect would pay dividends 
when it comes to rear seat space. Which, by and large, is true once you take a seat inside. Back seat space is probably the biggest difference between this car and its Hyundai Kona electric cousin, which offers a significantly smaller rear compartment with 90 millimetres less leg space. Perhaps just as significant is the fact that this e-Nero offers slightly more rear passenger room than most more affordable conventional C-segment family SUVs. Kia's mid-sized Sportage crossover, for instance, which may be lengthier externally but has a wheelbase 30 millimetres shorter. Unfortunately, though, you can't can't recline the backrest in the way you can on a Sportage, which on that car improves headspace for really lofty folk. Mind you, the headspace on offer here, 993mm, isn't bad at all. A couple of six-footers would fit in quite easily, and with 950mm of legroom, this should be reasonably comfortable on longer trips, even if they were placed behind two similarly lanky folk up front. You'll even fit in three adults back here slightly more easily than would be the case with most similarly sized rival models. That's thanks to the way that the relatively wide 1,805 millimeter body provides 1,402 millimeters of shoulder room. But of course you can't have everything. Sliding rear seat bases, for instance, don't tend to feature on any EV. And sure enough, those provided here are firmly fixed in place. You don't get any charging ports back here either. Still, you do get seat back storage nets, a couple of ISOFIX child seat mounts for the two outer seats, twin centre vents and a centre armrest with a couple of cup holders. The door cards look smart with white stitched pulls and piano plaque trimming, plus there are compact lower bins incorporating bottle holders. We'll finish with a look at the boot. Now, not long ago, it was a given that a full electric car would give you less luggage space than a comparably sized combustion engine model, thanks to the usual positioning of the EV battery pack beneath the cargo area floor. On the self-charging hybrid and PHEV plug-in hybrid versions of this car, it still is. But on the e-Nero, the liquid-cooled lithium-ion polymer battery system sits further forward beneath the passenger compartment. Swing up the large tailgate and you'll find a very generously proportioned boot that's usefully square in shape and 451 litres in size, which is 69 litres more than you get on the self-charging hybrid variant and a massive 127 litres more than is offered by the PHEV Nero model. That's better than you get from most family hatchbacks and pretty close to the luggage capacity you'd enjoy with a conventionally engined family SUV, a Kia Sportage for reference, offers a 491-litre boot. In the affordable electric vehicle sector, a Nissan Leaf gets somewhere near this e-Nero's capacity figure, but other similarly-sized EVs are way off. To give you some perspective, a Hyundai Kona Electric has 332 litres and a BMW i3 just 260 litres. A lot of figures, but what does it all boil down to? Well, on an airport run, you'd be able to fit five carry-on cases in back here. That's one more than could be accommodated by a Hyundai Kona Electric, though it's worth mentioning that we managed to fit two more carry-on bags in when we tried a Nissan Leaf. Four silver tie-down points are provided, but you don't get any bag hooks, nor is there a 12-volt point back here. More significantly, there's no adjustable height boot floor either, but the floor base is hinged, and when you raise it, various compartmentalised areas are revealed. The main central one will be taken up with the two charging leads, but outer compartments are available for the stowage of smaller items. Plus, helpfully, there's enough width to allow you to stow the tonneau cover under here when it's not in use. Drop the 60-40 split and tip back seat and you get an almost flat cargo area offering up to 1,405 litres of total fresh air. Kia 
Nokia launched this e-Nero with one single top-line spec, badged first edition, which is what we're testing here. Now, unlike this model's close cousin, the Hyundai Kona Electric, it isn't being offered with an entry-level 39-kilowatt-hour battery, though such an option is available in other markets. British buyers only get the top 64-kilowatt-hour variant, which, with this plush trim package, was pitched from launch at a price that would set buyers back £33,000 after deduction of the available £3,500 plug-in car government grant. Clearly, Kia could sell it for less with a lower level of spec, but at the time of this test in summer 2019, with waiting lists stretching for months in advance, there was simply no need for the brand to do so. On to price comparisons, starting with a Kia range perspective. As you'll know if you've watched other sections of this film, the e-Nero is one of three electrified models in the Nero family. A self-charging hybrid and a PHEV plug-in model are also available neither qualifying for any kind of government grant. Self-charging hybrid Nero variants start from around £25,000, but a comparably equipped top-spec version will cost you just over £29,000. The Nero PHEV comes only in a single plush level of trim, costing around £32,000. But what about if you're switching to an e-Nero from something more conventional in the Kia range? A spend somewhere in the 25 to £28,000 bracket will get you the brand's 1.6-litre CRDI diesel engine mated to DCT auto transmission in nicely equipped versions of either a Seed family hatch, an Xseed compact SUV or an Optima sports wagon estate. So, a saving of £5,000 or more, but that would then be eroded on those diesel models by higher taxation, lower residual values and the higher cost of fuel versus electric charging. If, after considering that, you're sold on the idea of EV motoring, you might then go on to compare purchase of an e-Nero with other full electric vehicles. With reference to these, we'll always quote prices, assuming that the £3,500 government plug-in grant has already been deducted, and we'll always quote driving range figures configured under the more realistic WLTP-rated cycle. If the ones you come across differ significantly from the ones we mention, it'll probably be because they've been compiled using the older, less accurate NEDC cycle test. Anyway, let's start with models you might be looking at from within the Hyundai-Kia conglomerate, beginning with the two EVs that share virtually all elements of this car's advanced drivetrain, namely the Hyundai Kona Electric, just mentioned, which offers a 279-mile driving range, and the second-generation version of Kia's Soul EV, which has a 280-mile range. The Kona Electric can be had in 64 kilowatt hour form with base premium spec for £150 less than an e-Nero, but in more comparable premium SE trim, a 64 kilowatt hour Kona Electric will cost you £2,150 more, despite the fact that it's got less rear passenger space and a much smaller boot. You could argue that the Kona looks trendier than this Nero, but your Kia dealer will have a ready answer for that objection. For just £800 more than this e-Nero, you can have Kia's fashionable little Soul EV with a 64 kilowatt hour powertrain and comparably plush first edition trim. But again, the Soul is significantly smaller inside than an e-Nero. You might also want to know how the pricing of this model compares to what's being asked for other zero emission models in the full EV market's most affordable segment. In purchasing a car of this kind, range and battery size are everything, which is why with 282 miles of WLTP rated driving range, the buying proposition of this e-Nero 64 kilowatt hour model looks so compelling. Apart from the Kona Electric and the Soul EV, the only compact segment model that can take this Kia on in this regard is the top E Plus 62 kilowatt hour version of Nissan's Leaf. But that car costs nearly £3,000 more and has a lower potential driving range of 239 miles. 
Normal versions of the Leaf, which is the EV market sales leader, are usually sold with a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack offering a range of 186 miles and are priced in the 26 to 29,000 pound bracket. If an EV model with the kind of lower driving range you'd get from a battery pack sized at around the 40 kilowatt hour mark would be sufficient for your needs, there's now a reasonable amount of choice in this segment. Hyundai actually offers two options, both priced in the 27 to 29,000 pound bracket, depending on the trim level chosen. One of them we referenced earlier, the lesser 39 kilowatt hour version of the Kona Electric, which will give you a 180 mile range. The brand also offers its Prius sized Ionic family hatch, which in full electric form has a 38.3 kilowatt hour battery and offers a range of 182 miles. You might also be looking at BMW's i3, another car with a battery pack sized at around the 40 kilowatt hour mark. In full electric form, the i3 offers 192 miles of driving range and costs from around 32,000. Less competitive is the Volkswagen E Golf, which uses a slightly smaller 35.8 kilowatt hour battery pack, so offers just 144 miles of driving range, yet costs around 30,000 pounds. Only slightly better is the MG ZS EV, which manages a range of 163 miles, but compensates with prices starting from around £25,000. If you're prepared to consider a smaller car than this e Nero, three other super mini-sized EV models could also be on your shopping list. The most familiar of these is Renault Zoe, which in its highest output form offers you a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack with a 186 mile driving range and is priced from around £24,000 if bought outright. If you can increase your budget to around £26,000, then you could consider either the Vauxhall Corsa E or the Peugeot E208, both of which offer a 211 mile range. Before leaving the issue of price comparisons, it's worth pointing out that even if you move way up market and pay almost twice as much for a premium badged large luxury segment EV, you'll still struggle to beat the 282 mile WLTP driving range of this Kia. A standard Tesla Model S offers 230 miles, an Audi e-tron Quattro 55 offers 241 miles, a BMW iX3 manages 249 miles and a Mercedes EQC delivers 259 miles. See what we mean? A Jaguar I-Pace at 292 miles is only fractionally superior to an e-Nero. And to give you some perspective, the top performing EV models in this regard, long range versions of the Tesla Model S and the Tesla Model 3, manage WLTP readings of 315 and 348 miles respectively. Enough, you've got the idea. Now let's say you're convinced and which is by no means certain you've managed to get yourself a place on what at the time of this test was a fairly lengthy e Nero buyer's waiting list. Just how generous has Kia been with the standard spec? Well, let's see. All the key electric drive elements come fitted, of course, throughout the range. The single speed push button auto transmission, regenerative brake shift paddles and a drive mode selector with a choice of sport or eco settings. Oh, and two charging cables, a seven pin type two AC charging lead and an emergency three pin AC charging lead connector. As for other features, well, let's start with the exterior stuff. You get roof rails and 17 inch diamond cut two tone alloy wheels, plus auto halogen headlamps with bi function projection, LED daytime running lights, and follow me home functionality that keeps the headlamps lit when you leave the car at night to see you to your front door. In addition, also included is solar glass with dark privacy tinting at the rear, LED rear lamp clusters, front fog lights, power folding heated mirrors, front and rear parking sensors, rain sensing wipers, a keyless entry smart entry system and a rear parking camera. Plus a package of useful camera driven safety items we'll cover off in a minute. An alarm is also standard, but unfortunately a spare wheel isn't.
Inside, there's leather upholstery that's heated at the front and an eight-way electrically operated driver's seat with powered lumbar support. Plus, you get a heated leather-stitched steering wheel, a trip computer and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror. A wireless phone charger for QI-equipped handsets is provided too. Or, as an alternative, a fast-charge USB port is incorporated into the centre console and both auxiliary and standard USB points are also included. You additionally get an adaptive smart cruise control system that can regulate your distance to the vehicle in front on the highway and includes a stop and go function that can, if necessary, even slow you down to a stop and seamlessly start you off again if you come across a tailback. Infotainment's taken care of by an 8-inch touchscreen centre dash display incorporating navigation, voice control, Bluetooth and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Also built in is an 8-speaker 320-watt JBL premium sound system with a DAB tuner, a subwoofer, an external amplifier and a front central speaker. And the infotainment setup includes Kia's useful package of connected services, including the TomTom Tom Live system, so that you can be alerted to speed cameras, updated on the weather, and provided with accurate information on traffic jams and roadworks. Through pre-downloaded apps, this setup also gives access to a variety of services such as Google Maps navigation, Google Play Music, hands-free calls and text messages. If you can use Apple CarPlay, you'll be able to use full Siri voice control of your phone's apps and functions while linking the car to Apple Maps or Google Maps, calls and text dictation, music streaming and audiobooks. So much for all the standard spec of this car. What about options? Well, there aren't many. Well, actually, there aren't any. Unless you count the choice Kia offers of five different paint colours, which includes optional or premium shades that will cost you extra. The choice is between silky silver, midnight black, white pearl, gravity blue, or, as here, graphite. Bear in mind that if you're new to the world of EV motoring, you'll need to budget the extra. You're going to need to install a charging wall box in your garage. Kia offers a 7 kilowatt home charge package in partnership with Podpoint, which will cost you £300 once you've subtracted the available £500 government OLEV, or Office for Low Emission Vehicles, grant. Let's finish by looking at this car from a safety perspective. Over 53% of the body is fashioned from ultra-high strength steel and features a rigid structure reinforced in critical areas including crumple zones, front and rear, and anti-intrusion beams at the sides. To build on this, Kia has included most key elements of its camera-driven safety technology as standard, the most significant feature is the FCA, or Forward Collision Avoidance Assist system, with pedestrian and cyclist detection. As you drive, the FCA camera scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. If something or someone is detected, the forward collision warning element of the system will alert you. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. This setup automatically switches between three operational modes. City, to prevent low-speed urban accidents at up to 13 miles an hour. Interurban, which operates between 31 and 50 miles an hour. And pedestrian, which detects pedestrians and other vulnerable road users such as cyclists at up to 44 miles an hour. Also standard is LDW, or Lane Departure Warning, which warns you if you drift out of your lane on the highway. At that point, an LKA, or Lane Keeping Assistant, automatically cuts in, using subtle steering guidance to ease the car back into the right position on the road. A further lane control tool is provided by Lane Following Assist, which works in conjunction with the standard Adaptive Smart Cruise Control System, and at speeds of up to 90 miles an hour helps to keep you in the centre of your lane on the highway, also by subtly controlling the steering. There's also a speed limit indicator function that pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. High beam assist that will automatically dip your headlights at night in the face of oncoming traffic. And a DAW or driver attention warning feature that monitors your reactions for drowsiness and, if necessary, will prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. 
In addition, there's blind spot collision warning, which alerts you if you're about to pull out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And there's a leading vehicle departure alert feature that works in a traffic queue, alerting you when the vehicle in front has moved off. As for more familiar standard safety stuff, well, like every Nero model, this one offers twin front side and curtain airbags, but also includes the driver's knee bag that's missing on a Hyundai Kona electric and on several key rivals. There's also ESC electronic stability control and VSM or vehicle stability management. In addition, the ABS brakes have a brake assist feature that helps in emergency stops that will be advertised to following motorists by an emergency stop signal feature that flashes the hazard lights to let them know what's going on. And there's ISOFIX child seat mountings for the two rear outer seats, a tyre pressure monitoring system that keeps an eye out for punctures and a hill start assist control feature to prevent the car from rolling backwards as you set off on inclines. Plus, a cut-off switch allows a child safety chair to be positioned on the front seat. We've always said that EV sales would only start to take off once the driving range of affordable contenders had become long enough for a full battery-powered model to make sense as an only car. Has that happened here? Well, some buyers will think so. As we've mentioned elsewhere in this film, a Kia e-Nero is WLTP rated at 282 miles between charges, about four times as far as you could go in, say, the earliest version of the Nissan Leaf. This figure's even 96 miles greater than the volume 40 kilowatt hour version of that Leaf can travel today. This Kia has a similar range advantage over most other popular compact EVs. Cars like Renault Zoe, the Volkswagen e-Golf and the all-electric version of BMW's i3. There's a much pricier 62 kilowatt hour E plus version of the Nissan Leaf that gives you 239 miles, but even there, this Kia's significant advantage remains. In fact, to equal what's on offer here, you've either to compromise on interior space and choose between two identically engineered models from the Hyundai Kia conglomerate, the Kia Soul EV and the Hyundai Kona Electric, or pay nearly twice as much for something like a Jaguar I-Pace or a Tesla Model 3, neither of which which will take you much further on a single charge. In testing electric cars at car and driving, we've often tended to take driving range figures, be they NEDC or WLTP based, with a rather large pinch of salt. This one's different. In our testing, we found it relatively easy to regularly break the 200 mile mark, which is about 75 to 80 miles more than we've managed in rivals like the i3, the Leaf or the Zoe. And if this car was used with a modicum of restraint, we've no difficulty in believing that around 250 miles would be possible, which is the kind of figure we sometimes struggle to get from really pricey Tesla models. Of course, to maximise your driving range, you're going to need to make copious use of the various driving aids Kia provides. There's a power charge driving gauge to the left of the instrument binnacle, the idea here being to keep the needle in the blue charge band as often as possible. To the right of this in the binnacle, there's a central screen that can be selected to display a driving style readout, which will award you percentage readings for economical, normal and dynamic progress. Your other key to maximising efficiency is to effectively harvest regenerative braking energy, which sounds complicated but actually isn't. These paddles behind the wheel allow you to dial in up to three levels of braking energy, the most aggressive of these allowing the car to pretty much stop on its own. That won't do much for the smoothness of your everyday progress, but the payoff is that driving range expectations can be reached much more easily. Alternatively, the car can look after the whole regeneration thing for you with an auto regeneration setting that activates software able to use the car's radar transceiver to constantly measure the distance to the vehicle in front. 
Two other useful efficiency tools are included within the car's Eco DAS or Eco Driving Assistant system. There's predictive energy control, which helps you maximize driving range by suggesting when to coast or brake. And also CGC or Coasting Guide Control, which takes information from the navigation system so that the car can anticipate road conditions to reduce energy use and identifies opportunities to harvest additional electric power through coasting. CGC will alert you as to the best time to lift off the accelerator and coast towards a junction, allowing the battery to regenerate under engine deceleration. Sleek aerodynamics help to maximize driving range too. An e-Nero has a drag coefficient of 0.29 CD, which is good for an SUV, achieved thanks to great attention to exterior detailing. A rear diffuser aids airflow under the car. There are specially profiled door mirror casings, and even the holes in the flush-fitted roof rails are covered. As an e-Nero owner, you'll be using the EV menu of this center dash touchscreen rather a lot, and four sections of it in particular. Most frequently, we've used the map display option, which uses colored radius graphics on a country map to show the extent of the journey you could undertake with the battery range the car has remaining. Plus, this particular screen has a list button that can show you all your local charging points and direct you to the nearest one. The second important EV menu option is the energy information section that shows both your total driving range with or without the climate control on and your remaining battery charge percentage. Plus, it'll tell you how much energy is being used by the car's driving, climate and electrical features. And it'll advise you at any given time how long charge replenishment will take, either from an AC or a DC charging point. A third charge management section is very useful in the way that it allows you to preset charging times for cheaper off-peak electricity rates. And finally, if you want to feel smug as you survey other road users, you can switch to an eco-driving section that shows you the CO2 reduction you've achieved compared to a gasoline car of similar size. A history section shows how much this has varied over time. We should get on to charging issues. Replenishing a battery pack this big isn't for the faint-hearted, but provided it can be done overnight, most owners will be more than satisfied. That's easily possible in this e-Nero, and while charging is taking place, the vehicle's incorporated battery heating system will slightly warm the lithium-ion cells, minimizing the effect of cold temperatures. If you haven't got a charging wall box in your garage, you're gonna need one, a 7.2 kilowatt unit that your dealer can arrange to be fitted via Kia's deal with specialists Podpoint. This will cost you £300 once you've subtracted the available £500 government OLEV or Office for Low Emission Vehicles grant. With the wall box in place, you'll be able to revive your e-Nero's battery cells from empty in around nine and a half hours. That's three times quicker than it would take if you merely plugged this car into a domestic three-pin supply. The nine and a half hour charge would set you back in the region of around eight pounds on most household tariffs, based on an average unit price of 12.5 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity on an off-peak tariff. A typical cost at the time of this test, the summer of 2019. If when you're out and about you can find a CCS charging point with a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, there are over a thousand of them around the UK, then you'll find that a 0 to 80% rapid charge will take around 75 minutes. In the very unlikely event you come across a 100 kilowatt DC fast charger, that replenishment time will be reduced to just 54 minutes for 80% of capacity. What else might you need to know? Well, as an e-Nero owner, you'll be exempt from the London congestion charge. And for the second year of ownership, you won't have to pay an annual VED tax disc charge. For company car users, electric vehicles offer potentially huge tax savings as they incur benefit in kind taxation fixed at just 9% compared to 22% for a diesel car emitting 100 grams per kilometer of CO2 or just over. As for your warranty, well, it's the usual comprehensive
comprehensive Kia deal, a seven-year, 100,000-mile package that comes as standard and also covers the battery and the electric motor. There's also a 12-year anti-perforation warranty and five years of paint warranty. Only a year of roadside assistance is offered, though, when a customer registers on the brand's My Kia system. A Kia Roadside Assistance Plus package can be unlocked, which gives you the highest level of cover provided by the RAC. This includes onward travel and European cover. Maintenance will obviously be cheaper than it would be for a combustion engined model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. Service intervals on an e-Nero are every year or every 10,000 miles, which is quite a bit more frequent than a rival Nissan Leaf, which is every 18,000 miles. The Korean brand offers various Kia Care prepaid service plans. If you want, you can even purchase a package that will cover the car for the full length of its warranty. If you're wondering about residual values, well, these will vary depending on future market take-up of EVs. At the moment, any electric vehicle will shed its value faster than a conventional petrol or diesel model, but that state of affairs could change very quickly as prevailing public opinion is shaped by the media. Independent experts reckon that after three years and 60,000 miles, an e-Nero would still be worth £15,625. That's 43% of its original value. Insurance is a bit higher than the market average at Group 28. To give you some segment perspective, all Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour and BMW i3 models are rated at Group 21. And what about the green issues? Well, some in the green lobby get very angry about the whole pure electric car zero emissions ethos. They reckon that ignores the well-to-wheel demands of supplying the electricity that powers cars of this kind. We'd respond by pointing out that these people usually completely overlook the fact that CO2 figures for conventional cars fail to take into account the logistical cost of getting fuel to the pump. Still, if you're one of those those enviro-conscious folk will tell you using a well-to-wheels calculation based on typical use of the UK's energy grid, the burden of filling your batteries in this car will result in a theoretical 62 grams per kilometre of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. That's certainly good, but some way from being completely green. Which is also a comment you could apply to electric vehicle engineering as a whole. Lithium-ion batteries aren't recyclable in the way that the fuel cells used in hydrogen-powered vehicles are. Currently, when EV vehicles are reaching the end of their lives, the batteries are being reused as electricity storage buffers. After that, though, they can't simply be scrapped because lithium-ion has explosive elements. So these batteries are simply being buried in landfills, which is hardly sustainable in the long term for humankind. But then nor is the pollution caused by combustion power. If you see the EV solution as the lesser of the two evils and your purchase of a battery-powered model must be contained within a reasonable budget, we think it's difficult to ignore this one. Let's make this as clear as it can possibly be. On paper, the e-Nero makes more sense than any other compact, family-sized electric car. The only two models that can match this contender's driving range, Hyundai's Kona Electric and Kia's Soul EV, need the same powertrain to do so, but package it in a much smaller body shell that isn't really family-sized. The e-Nero isn't huge inside either, but it'll be big enough for most buyers. You'd have to be a very dedicated follower of fashion to choose either the Kona or the Soul in preference. With all three of these Korean models, what's significant is the way that at relatively affordable prices, they deliver the kind of usable driving range that would make any one of them almost usable as an only car. Better still, we found that the claimed range isn't so far away from what's actually achievable in everyday use. And if the extra practicality of this e-Nero sways you in its favour, are there issues you might not like? Well, 
not too many. It's a pity it can't be had with a lower spec at a lower price. And for the future, we'd like to see Kia concentrate on delivering a slightly more involving driving experience, which would be helped by a reduction in weight and the adoption of a more feelsome steering rack. Otherwise, the problems here are those that afflict all EVs a restricted public charging infrastructure, the need for off-street parking, and of course, an ultimate restriction in driving range. The latter issue used to be the killer problem for most would-be EV buyers. Being able in this one to say drive from London to Sunderland without a stop should make a big difference here. But of course, electric vehicle ownership is all about suitability for frequent shorter trips. And in this regard too, an e-Nero is difficult to better. As a result, if Kia could make it more affordable and sell it in greater numbers, we think it could have a huge market impact. As it is though, this car will remain a rare but clever choice amongst family buyers who've really done their homework and, when we look back in a decade's time at EVs that really changed their market, we think this will be one of them. <laughs>